to today's session. So we continue looking at the 2021 mathematics paper one. So today in this second episode we are looking at question seven going forward. So in episode one we covered one up to six. So question seven leads a matrix M is equal to negative two, three, four, negative two. Find the transpose of M. So when you're given generally a matrix M, which has A, B, C, D. So a transpose of M is basically to find the transpose, what you do is basically you swap the these two elements in the diagon. Okay? So elements, so where the there was B we bring C, then where was C we put B, then D. Once you do that, you have transpose the matrix so in the similar way m transpose will be now so negative two remains where we are we have three we put a four now where we are d a four we put a three then negative two so this one is the transpose so basically this is how you find it, the transpose so this is how easy it is so let us look at b a matrix p equals 2, negative 1, 0, 3. Then Q is a column vector, negative 1, 3. Find PQ. So PQ, remember the order of multiplying when I deal with matrices are important. So what happens is when you are given two matrices, okay, in this case, you like them the way they are. So we have a 2, which is P, this one, then negative 1, then we have 0, then we have 3. Then we are multiplying with a column vector, this one, then uh, that. So when you are multiplying, so remember, this is a 2 by 2, then multiply by a, a 2 by 1. So what we, we end up, we end up with a 2 by 1. So this and this one, so we end up with the outside, this. So it will be two by one matrix, which is two rows, then one column. So in this case, what we end up with is you are multiplying this law. Okay, so you are multiplying this law by this column. So you see this one multiplied by that one, then this one multiplied by that one. So it's two multiplied by negative two, we end up with negative two multiplied by negative one, we end up with negative two. Then negative one multiplied by three, we end up with negative three. Okay, then we have 0 multiplied by negative 1 is a 0 plus, then 3 multiplied by 3 is 9. Remember here there is a plus, so when you simplify that we end up with negative 5, uh, 9, which is a 2 low by 1 column. So this is our answer, which is negative 5. Nine. This is our answer to B. Okay, so let us move to question number eight. So question number eight leads. It is given that the universal set E equals the first eight or numbers. A is a set of even numbers listing A. So the f what is tricky is listing E. What is E in E? Okay. So the universal set, what is in the universal set E? A, the first eight all numbers. Remember, the all numbers are those non-flaction or non-negative numbers. So zero obeys the law of the all number. So we have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, up to seven. So the temptation is to go up to 8. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So if you include 8, you mess up. That's where the trick is, is understanding that 0 is also a whole number. So now once you understand that, it's easier to list A. So because A is coming from universal. So even numbers. So the first number that is divided by 2 is a 2 itself. So we have a 2, then a 4, then a 6. So four six. So basically, you're noticing this is part A. So we have A contains uh, two, four, and six. Okay, good. 
So let us move to question number uh, 8B. So we are going to 88B. So 8B leads a certain company sells sells shares at 1.3 quarter per share. Okay? A businessman at 9,100 quarter to buy shares. How many shares did he, she get? Okay, so for us, we are to find the, the number of shares. This one get the number of shares. We need to know the budget. Okay. Budget that she has divided by price per share. Price per share. So the budget in this case is 9,100. Then price per share is 1.3. Okay, it's 1.3. So... Once we divide 1.91 divide by 1.3, what we are getting is basically about um, 13 into 93. It will be about, uh, okay, 13 into 65 is 5. Okay, 65, 91 minus 65, we are remaining with uh, basically a... Uh, uh, about about 14 about 26 so 13 to 26 is twice so it's 7 so 13 this one in tune is 70 91 in uh, 1.3 into 91 is 70 okay then plus this two zero so we get 7000 so there will be 7000 shares okay 7000 shares Basically, that's how you deal with question 8B. Remember, in paper 2 or in paper 1, calculators are not allowed. So, you need to quickly know how to divide very fast using without using a calculator. So, let us look at question 9. So, question 9, a third and a fourth term of an arithmetic progression are 6 and 3, respectively. Find the first term. So, we know that an arithmetic progression AP is given by the first term plus n minus 1 times the difference. So, what the question is asking us is to find this one and this difference. So, what we are told is the third term. So, when n is equal to 3, so we have 6 is equal to a plus n minus 3 minus 1 times d, which is c. 6 is equal to a plus 2d. This is equation 1. Then we have equation 2, where the third, the fourth term, the fourth term is equal to 3. So we have 3 is equal to a basically a plus uh, 4 minus 4 minus 1 times d. So end up 3 is equal to a plus 3d. This is equation 2. So, we, we bring equation 1 there. What we end up with is A plus 3D is equal to 3. Then, we have A plus 2D equals to 6. Then, we subtract. So, we have A minus A is a 0. 3D minus 2D, we get a D is equal to uh, 3 minus 6, we get minus 3. So, D is equal to minus 3. So having known d, having known d, we can find what a is. We can find what a is just by using n of this. So we're going to pick this equation. So we have a plus three times negative three uh, equals to six. So we have a is equal to a plus a minus nine equals six. Well, this is three. Sorry. This is 3 is equal to 3. So, it's A is equal to 9 plus 3. Remember, we picked this equation. So, the, there. So, A is equal to 12. 12. So, A is equal to basically 12. So, we found what the first term is. So, the first term is 12. Basically, the first term is 12. Then be the formula. So we've already found D. So to find the formula, so the formula of the nth term. So remember from this one, we just substitute. So we have AP 
equals to so a is 12 then minus it will be n minus 1 times d now what we know what d is okay so d is a 3 so we end up with 12 minus 3 uh, n minus 1 which is basically equal to 12 minus 3 n plus 3 so which is equal to 15 3 plus 12 15 minus 3 n as our answer or we can factor out 3 which will give us nothing but uh, 3 then uh, 5 minus n okay 5 minus n such that when n when n is 3 to be 5 minus 3 to be 2 2 times 6 2 times 3 it will give us 6 okay that's uh, the case so that when n is equal to 4 it will be 5 minus 4 1 times 3 you see a 3 so basically this is how you deal with question 9 let us move to question number 10 so let us move to question number 10 so question number 10 is on probability is on probability probability so if you look at question number 10 number 10 a leads the probability of getting a black button from a box is two out of nine two out of nine okay so if you look at this one i do like this so we have black are uh, not black so a bit of getting a black button is two out of nine then of not getting a black button will be what remains in the button that remains which is basically seven out of nine because the probability that any blank should add up to one so find the probability of getting a but a button which is not black so basically you know you can also use this principle probability of getting a a black button probability of not getting a black button is equal to one so probability of not getting a black is equal to one minus probability of getting a black so which is basically one minus say two over nine okay so if you look at the common denominator, say nine nine here minus two you get seven out of nine which is the same thing that we got here so here the answer is seven over nine okay let us go to question 10b so 10b the diagram below shows a sector a or b with a center at o and let us 21 centimeter the angle subtended at the center is theta and the area of the sector is 462 462 square Calculate the value of theta given that pi is equal to that. Okay, so if you look at this question, let me just clear the board so that we have enough space. If you look at this question, we know what the formula for area. So the formula for area, area is given by pi r square. This is the formula for the entire area. So if it's a for, it's an area for the sector, so it will be the angle subtending that sector over 360 multiplied by pi r square pi r square so in this case the area is given to us so what we know is we have the angle subtended by this over 360 multiplied by pi r square is equal to 2 4 62 462 then we are looking for the angle subtended so the pi will be given and the radius will be given so it will be basically this angle we are looking for 360 multiplied by pi which is 22 over 7 multiplied by what is it? the radius is 21 we square it is equal to 462 then at this point it's much more easier what we know is we have this theta 360 multiplied by 22 over 7 then multiplied by 21 multiplied by 21 over 21 multiplied over 21 is equal to 462. So at this point, we can start dividing. Remember, we're not allowed to use a calculator in paper 2. So we have to use our... So 7 into 7 is a 1. 7 into 21 is a 3. Okay? We know 3 into 3 is 1. 3 into 360 is basically 120. Next, we divide 120. We divide by a 2. 
we get a 60 then 2 into 22 is 11 okay then we can further divide we know that a 3 can go into 60 we get a 20 then 3 into 21 is a 7 okay then what we have is basically this one 11 multiplied by uh, 7 we get basically 77 2 theta over 20 equals 462 so what we end up is basically this theta we're looking for is equal to a 20 multiplied by 462 over 77 so we're dividing by 77 to remain with what we are looking for then what you notice here is uh basically if we divide 77 okay if you divide 77 into 46, okay, into this one, okay, 77 into 464, we are ending up with basically uh, 6. Why 6? If we divide uh, 6 times uh, 20, we end up with 1. 20. We end up with 120. So here we can divide by 7. We mean with 11. Then 7 into 46. We have 42, which is basically, if you notice here, we have 42, which is giving us 6. Then remainder 4. 7 into 42 again is 6. 11 into 66 is a 1. Then here is 6. 6 times 120. 6, 6 times 20, hence we are getting 120 degrees. So this is the angle where 120 degrees is coming. I thought just I should break it down for you so that you follow along. So basically, this is how you deal with question 10. So today we shall end on question 10. Then in the next session, we'll pick it up from question 11 going forward. Thank you very much for joining us today.